The competition Women in Public Spaces was conducted by Everyday City Lab and featured on the Decoding Everyday portal. In this competition, we invited entries to explore the questions around how women in India both perceive and use the public spaces within their neighborhoods. Which spaces in the city give them a sense of comfort and safety? Which spaces are less likely to be frequented by them? What are their priorities in terms of social, cultural, and religious activities in their everyday lives? The entries that we received reflected different perceptions of the same. Of the multiple entries that we received, we have featured six of them on our Decoding Everyday portal. Today, we have here with us the winners of this competition. We have here with us Namrata Narendra, who won the first prize for her uh, reflective piece titled Conversations on a Park Bench. And we also have Kajal Kumari, who won the second prize for her painting titled Tree, uh, Tree of Education. So to begin with, uh, I'd like, can you please introduce yourself? Can we start with Namrata? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Parna. Um, so I'm actually an architect by training. Uh, right now I'm uh, delving more into the urban space, uh, trying to understand uh, uh, governance systems in water and also infrastructure and looking at it through the lens of gender. Um, I'm also an urban fellow at the Indian Institute for Human Settlements and I'm based out of Bangalore. That's, uh, that's great. Thank you, Namrata. Kajal, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm Kajol. I'm based out in Ludhiana, Punjab, and I have done bachelor's in sociology, and I have interest in design as well. That's great to know. So uh, moving forward, can you please explain your entry for the competition, Women and Public Spaces? What is your understanding of the theme? Uh, how did the initial idea come to you? Uh, if you refer to any works or any people, can we start with yours, Namrata? Yeah, so actually, uh, as part of one of our projects in the fellowship program that I'm doing, uh, we were looking at mobility, especially of women in the neighborhood. and. Uh, one thing that we noticed was there was a lot of academic visibility in the terms of posters, uh, these rank holder boards where a lot of women are seen, but it didn't reflect in the streets because you never saw the, the girls in the playgrounds and the parks anywhere. Uh, so what we decided to do was just walk around and talk to women to try and understand their mobility and their leisure time, especially in, in the neighborhood themselves. And um, so that was when we, uh, it was a group project. So that was when we met a few women at a park and they spoke very longingly about um, about a park bench, just this one entity within an entire park ecosystem wherein they found their refuge after a day's work or after any anything. And they and they'd created a network, a community within the park itself. So that's, that's where the idea for the piece came from and we wrote about it because uh, I mean, for me, at least it was very interesting to understand that a community was formed with no prior um, relations and just formed out of this one area in the park. And it, it spoke also a lot about freedom in, in a public space. It spoke about work-life balance. It spoke about children and, and their access. Um, and it was, it was a very interesting conversation to have and then reflect on it and write about it. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Uh, Kajol, would you like to describe your entry? Yes. Uh, so actually women are seen uh, weak when compared to men due to biological differences in our society. So I thought of creating something which would, you know, showcase strength of a woman. So from my childhood, I, I remembered one experience with my grandmother she used to teach me uh, our uh, mother tongue and uh, she used to dictate uh, some uh, words and I used to write that under the tree. So that experience was uh, very insightful for me. So I thought of uh, drawing that. Okay. So, uh, uh, since since I would say that uh, all of us are women as well and we have shared our experiences through this uh, you guys have shared uh, it through your writings and your paintings. Is there something in your everyday life besides what you've wrote, or, uh, 
besides what you've written as well, which uh, which gets to you an experience that uh, as a woman who accesses a public space as to what defines your sense of safety, or do you access a particular space or do you not access a public space? Mm -hmm. Are there particular timings? Would you like to uh, let me know? Namrita, can we have you take this up? Yeah, um, yeah, actually a lot of things because uh, some of the pieces also that have already mentioned that uh, safety is one important aspect that uh, is is almost at the core of when you decide to venture out, what time you venture out, which neighbor you venture out, and for what reason. Um, so of course, safety is something that's just inherent. You constantly think about it, and uh, and that automatically changes the programming of your day. So if I were to step out at night for a walk, which on, I mean, it's Bangalore weather, I would want to do that. Uh, I automatically think about where I can go, what 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 spaces I can access and at what time of day. Um, the same thing, of course, also translates to my, my method or mode of navigating the city in terms of transport, because there, there are variety of options, but again, it's limited because of either inaccessibility due to low frequency or just being unsafe or just being uh, very hard to uh, commute because it's multiple transitions and not just one single um, mode of uh, navigation. Uh, so that, I mean, there are a lot of things in that sense, but I think what I've realized at least having lived in different neighborhoods in Bangalore and many other cities is that over time you learn and you kind of figure out that these are the times that you can go out and these are the times that you can revel in the public space, knowing that uh, you won't be stopped, there won't be any limitation, and you also have people around you. And I think that's that's one of the biggest trends. So even if there is surveillance, even if there is none, you just uh, you have an internal programming that lets you know that you are safe and it's it's your space at least for that moment in time. So would you like to share your thoughts? Yeah, so as uh, Namrita told that, you know, uh, an internal clock uh, works for us and we feel that when we are safe and when we are not. So uh, uh, that is absolutely correct uh, according to my opinion. And uh, uh, I face like difficulty in the evening actually while going outside like, uh, basically, I live in Air Force campus and it's a, you know, defense area. So it's, uh, uh, means totally safe. But outside, I, I face difficulty sometimes. Like, I don't go in late, like after 7 p.m. or after 8 p.m. I don't go outside. Because obviously, it means, I mean, we are girls and we, we know that what is safe for us and what is not. Like, uh, by the environment and by the... Uh, people surrounded by us, so we know what is safe for us. So, do you recollect any any of the other entries that are featured on the portal that intrigued you, Namrata? Uh, would you like to share your thoughts? Yeah, there was uh, this one piece about women in uh, public parks, in especially the gym area. Um, the ones that are part of the public parks. And it's very interesting because I've also observed this, that women come in, um, I mean, it is essentially for a mode of exercise, but it stops being that and it stops being an hour to, um, to be with friends, to be with people around, to talk, to catch up on days. And uh, you also bring your children and then they, they move around in the parks or outside. So they're always in the vicinity, but uh, that that literally becomes a break from the day and you're engaged in while whilst you're exercising you're also engaged in so many other conversations that are happening and um, and I think it's a very powerful thing that the, this this gym has been installed in all of these parks because uh, apart from that it's just walking but this kind of has this uh, almost like this space that you can take over all it especially during that time when they're there and and it's it's a very collective empowerment kind of feeling and that that was a very interesting piece also because i have um, i have a lot of interest in understanding public parks and understanding the 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 timeline of when people come in what time and what they do uh, so that piece was really interesting for me to read what about you Kajal? 
Yes, uh, so there was one entry regarding uh, traveling in buses in Bangalore city. So uh, that, that I mean, uh, that in, interests me a lot. Like I've been in Bangalore and I have seen a uh, woman uh, traveling in buses and they have quite an expression when they enter a bus, if it's not crowded. And I have seen the quite of uh, fear they have, okay, like what will happen in, um, you know, next few minutes and what would be the outcome if I, I don't take this bus. So like uh, that entry interests me a lot. That's great to know. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. I think for both of your entries, one, uh, you've uniquely captured how women access public spaces. But there's uh, one thing that's common in both your cases is that you are talking about a specific element, which is access. So in your case, Namrita, it's a it's the bench in a park that women access, and that space gets women together, and they are it's sort of their place. Whereas in your case, Kajol, it's the tree with a platform underneath it, which is which is where you you have a personal experience with your grandmother. And so both of you are highlighting this element which is allowing access, but at the same time, both of you are coming from a point of view and are uh, talking about experiences that because there is a lack of other spaces, you are accessing these certain spaces. And which, uh, which brings to light as to, uh, as to the fact that there's a thought that uh, women access particular spaces and we have adapted in a particular way. Like you also said, Namrita, that, uh, you know, we, uh, we consciously know that uh, we adapt over time, we realize where we can go, where we cannot go. And that, that brings to light that uh, certain things might be right in particular spaces and we can probably replicate that. We can aim towards a better access for all of these spaces. And uh, that's, that's, really great to know so thank you so much for joining us and sharing your thoughts if you if you have any other thoughts that you would like to share you're most welcome to um i think i just i want to speak about how it's very important for us to constantly keep pushing the, the this uh this inaccessibility this limitation that's kind of very implicitly imposed uh just constantly keep pushing and questioning and trying to access spaces that are said, you know, not for women or not safe or um, not uh, really user friendly, etc. Uh, because I guess the more we push, the more, the more the spaces will open out to us. So I think that's just very important for all of us to just try, um, if not practice always. Absolutely. I think that that's the need of the art that we, we need to constantly keep on acting on it because all of us have been facing it for a long time. We've been seeing this and we've adapted uh, accordingly, but there are certain things that, that can provide better accessibility and the inclusion of women and as well as other genders in public spaces is a must. So anything you would like to add, Kaju? Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, not a full sense or not not in uh, that sense but women are not uh, i mean confident about them like while they are in public spaces they are not confident ki, yeah we can do this we can do that we can teach kids under a banyan tree like my grandmother used to do so we sh uh, the first thing is like we should be confident in ourselves women should develop this quality like it is the need of our in my opinion and the second thing is, uh, I mean, both gender should be in, uh, you know, cohesion means they should definitely support each other. Other, uh, other. Uh, that's how we grow, like society grows. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts, and for joining us today. It was really nice to have both of you here, and thank you so much for participating in the conversation.